Hi, I'm Ross and welcome to Biker Talk. In this video, I talk to Nick about his time as a police officer, both here and in the UK, and his experience as an escort rider for the Royals. Enjoy. My name's Nick, I've been riding for 45 years. Being a young lad, 16 years old, living back in the UK, all my friends around me were buying bikes and riding bikes. So I wanted a bike, I asked the parents, can I buy a bike, can I get one? They were adamant that I wasn't gonna ride, I was not gonna get one. So two weeks time, what did I go and do? I went and bought a bike. The first bike I, I purchased, a CS3, Yamaha CS3, two stroke, 200 cc. I learned a few lessons on that bike very, very quickly. Uh, not to apply the brakes fast when it's raining because you end up and sliding down the road uh, on your ass, which I did, unfortunately. I used to ride that um, Yamaha all the way through the bush at, in, on Salisbury Plain. Uh, it was great. The feeling was just like being on a push bike again, but I didn't have to pedal. It was fantastic. And I'll be riding along. It was really great. The, the feeling I had for bikes there and then, that's what started it. That little old bike that I threw down the street in the rain. Yeah, that's what started it. I was a, a, like a civilian armourer with the RAF. Uh, and then uh, I joined the police. Uh, and I did quite a few years in the police. Uh, and I joined Highway Patrol. And I would see the guys on the bikes and I'd say, yeah, that's what I want to do. Look at those bikes. I got onto Highway Patrol. There's various different courses I had to do then to get up to the level I, I achieved, which was uh, VIP level, which was um, uh, escorting dignitary, uh, royal, uh, the royals, etc. My job was um, as a motorcyclist, and you've seen it on the television where there's a, there's a cavalcade of cars and there's motorcyclists in front and behind. And the motorcyclist's job was to attend intersections, traffic lights, to stop people from coming out in front of the cavalcade. And the cavalcade had to keep moving. It could not stop wherever. A red traffic light, no, kept going. When you go past the Queen, she never used to like the blue lights on, never used to like the sirens going, and she didn't like the noise of the engine. So you would come up behind the cavalcade, the VIP was probably in the third car, so in the middle somewhere. And you're coming up from behind because you had to be up in front. Turn the blue lights off, turn the siren off. You really ramp the engine and then decelerate. And as you go past the Queen, and then you're off again. So basically she didn't see any blue lights, didn't hear any noise. And the bike was silent as it went past. At the moment, I've only got three, unfortunately. I've got a Triumph Bonneville. 1966 vintage from my early school days when I used to go to the local disco down the road all the lads would turn up and arrive on their maroon Bonnevilles they would turn up and I would look at them and drool over the bikes they would always have the girls since then I used to love hearing the sound of Bonnies disappearing off and looking at them and going yeah I need to get one of them so I thought yeah I'll get a see if I can buy a bike 1961 couldn't quite, so what I've got is a 1966. So she's almost my age. Like any cranky old girl, in the mornings, she's a little, she's a little bit um, hesitant to start. But when she's going, she's going really well. And today, she is going really well. I love the retro styling of bikes. And that's what I was always brought up with back in the 60s and 70s. I've got a Royal Enfield Interceptor, another stunning machine, really, really good. Enough power for anyone. I've done a few modifications on it to make it a little bit more powerful, but not too much. I love the retro styling of, of bike because like I said, when I first got interested in bikes, that's what they used to look like. They used to look like this. Uh, and over in the far right, which is out, it's blurred and you can't see it, uh, Harley Davidson Road King. And I've done a few modifications to that stage two to make her a little bit noisier. Um, and she's my uh, touring motorcycle. It's really, really comfortable. I, I thought 
I wouldn't be comfortable on this. And I've got highway pegs. And I, I, when I first bought the Road King, I was going to take those off. I thought, no, I'll take them off. I'll never take them off now. It's really comfortable. Nice and noisy so people can hear me. Um, yeah, just a nice bike overall to ride. Motorcycling, how can these be dangerous? The only time they'll be drained dangerous if you push one over your toe. In themselves, they're not dangerous, like anything. You know, with the correct training, these things behind me are safe as. It is the person holding the machine up and twisting that throttle. If your training and your ability cannot match the machine that you're riding, then you need more training or don't open the throttle too much. Ride to your ability, don't ride to show off. Go back to your training. Don't, don't just try and impress people out on the road, out on the street. Um, try and get more training. Look for other, other people to teach you more skills. Do some advanced driving or rider training. Um, improve all the time. I improve all the time, every time I go out. Because yeah, I may get a bend wrong one day and the next day, right, okay, I'll remember how to go around that. I teach driving as well. What I try and instill into the new students there is I don't teach them just to pass the driving test. That's what they want me to do, but I'm trying to give them skills for life. India. I've got friends that have been over there and they've said it's amazing. Um, and I'd just like, you know, like to go over there. I've been over in Egypt a few times because uh, I used to dive over there. And I've got a few students that are Indians that I teach driving. And as soon as I mention motorcycling, straight away they say, have you got a Royal Enfield? Yes. Ah, oh, is it a bullet? No, it's not. It's an interceptor. Oh, my dad's, my father's got a, a bullet. Uh, and it, like I said, it's a cult thing. And I think, yeah. Let's go over to India and drive around, see what it's like. When I was back in the police and I would go through the town centre, for instance, I'd go past shops with big windows. Why is that? Yeah. Oh, don't I look cool? And I'd look in the mirror, yeah, and I'd make sure I stop before I hit the car in front of me. And I'm looking, don't I look cool? I get that feeling when I'm riding any of my bikes, any of them, especially the Harley. But I get that feeling when I'm riding any of my bikes. Uh, it's just freedom. The feeling I get when I dive is the same feeling I get when I'm riding. And I used to say it to my students when I'm diving. But when you're diving, you're concentrating on one thing, staying alive, breathing. Any stress that you have had in your day, you breathe it out and it goes off with the bubbles to the surface and it's gone. Same thing on a bike. When you're riding the bike, you are actually riding it. You're concentrating on that bike. You're not thinking about your day's work or what you're going to have for tea or anything else because all your concentration needs to be on that bike. Your one concentration and, you know, all your stresses just disappear. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give us a thumbs up. And remember, you can't buy happiness, but you can ride a motorcycle. And that's kind of the same thing. And here's a little bonus for those of you who have hung around. Old Doddy Mead, he was an old guy on uh, VIP. He was escorting the Queen into um, some big mansion in the UK. And it's got a gravel driveway and you had to turn in. He was lead bike. And as he turned in, he lost control of the bike. And the principal car drove in and as he's falling off he's going like this and he's as he's going over onto the grass and it was just oh it's classic classic i just recorded that that's going in the story <laughs>